Art collections on the prairies are representative not only of the cultural, social, and geographical landscapes, but also of how we relate to the rest of the world. Whether it's a small personal collection or a large public one, these bodies of work reflect what we value aesthetically and contextually. Public collections in Saskatchewan are home to a rich variety of works, but share similar collecting practices. The Remy Modern, the Mackenzie Art Gallery, and the University of Saskatchewan focus on acquiring modern pieces on a local, national, and international level, while centering Indigenous artists and contemporary dialogues. The University of Saskatchewan has collected art objects since 1910, resulting in a unique collection that spans many art movements and consists of over 6,000 objects. As the property of an educational institution, the primary purpose of the collection is to utilize art objects as teaching and research tools, as well as to capture cultural moments in time. While over 2,000 objects of the collection are displayed throughout campus, they are also included in curated exhibitions in our galleries. The entire collection is accessible online at www.sascollections.org slash Kenderdine. Exploring the database is simple. You can punch in keywords, themes, or names into the search bar. For example, if you really want to look at art featuring ducks, you can type that in and search through the results. When you find an object of interest, you can click to enlarge the image as well as view the details of the object, such as size or the artist that produced it. The database also includes different search functions under the Browse tab. The sidebar includes categories such as object title and source. If you wanted to view the oldest work in the collection, you can use the date function to search by decade. 1510 is the earliest, and the only work we have from this category is a print by Albrecht Durer, The Beheading of John the Baptist. Let's say you're interested in the medium more than Durer. You can search wood engraving on paper and look at a more recent piece, such as this Gerard Brendera Brandis print, Birches. Now, one of the better places to search is the advanced search. You can search by name, such as Smith. You can see on the right bar under Artist, all the separate artists that have Smith in their name. If you click on one of those, such as Paul Smith, you can view just his works. Now, if you click on one of his works, it will show you the extended information for that object, and the next button will take you to the following image in that set. From here on, you can click on the image, and it will open up in a new window that you can zoom in on. Now, in the Gallery section, you can see special collections of images and artists such as those collected in the Engineering Library or the Natural Sciences Library. These include a curatorial statement as well as extended labels for the object. Obviously, looking through the database is a completely different experience from viewing the work in a gallery. When we look at this Zachary Logan drawing through the database, there are a few notable differences. Perhaps the most obvious is the scale of the drawing, the dimensions for this work are over 200 times larger than the average smartphone screen, which is going to affect the amount of detail we're able to appreciate. We also need to consider how the drawing is being lit in the gallery and be aware that the backlighting of our screens may change how the image appears to us. In order to view this piece in exhibition, we'll go to www.art.usask.ca, which is home to the documentation of the last three years of shows. Next, go to Exhibitions and click on Ross Blackner and Zachary Logan in the Shadow of the Sun. We can see the installation and get a better feeling of the physicality of the work. By looking at the exhibition documentation, we can gain more perspective of how this drawing feels in a space, how it communicates with the other objects, as well as view the curatorial and artistic choices for the gallery. The galleries that we know today of white walls, glassy doors, and quiet spaces exists in sharp contrast to displays previously held in salons and places of worship. As the world raced towards modernism, exhibition was a practice that continuously evolved. While white walls weren't unheard of prior to 1933, making an appearance in Boston in 1909, Germany was the first to standardize the sterile setting. However, it wasn't until 1936 when the first director of the MoMA, Alfred Barr, opened the groundbreaking exhibition Cubism and Abstract Art that the practice was internationally adopted. While this format is still used today, artists and curators are increasingly pushing the boundaries of exhibition. Material Girls was shown at the Kenderdine Gallery in 2017. 
The three curators, Jennifer Matatek, Blair Fornwald, and Wendy Peart, took a maximalist approach for the installation, painting and wallpapering every gallery wall. This exhibition brought together the disparate works of 25 female artists to collectively address critical ideas around feminization, identity, ornamentation, and materiality. This approach to curating challenges the pretense of neutrality performed by the White Cube Gallery. The term the White Cube was coined by Brian O'Doherty in a series of essays in 1976. His critique of the White Cube was that it removed perspective from the work, as well as a mirrored 20th century society's obsession with social and intellectual snobbery, famously saying that the ideal gallery subtracts from the artwork all cues that interfere with the fact that it is art. Assuming you don't live in an art gallery, looking at art digitally gives you the opportunity to view pieces through a different lens. Consider what you're hearing, smelling, even tasting. Are you in a creepy basement? Maybe you're on your couch, or maybe you're drinking coffee. As you experience art through a screen, take a moment to also observe your surroundings. By doing this, you can curate your own experience and enrich viewing digital art from online exhibitions to social media. Oh, no.